Namaste. My name is Abraham Verghese. I lived in the, in the UK for 45 years. Uh, and my main practice was as a barrister. I have returned to my country of India, even though I'm a citizen of Britain, uh, not only really to look after my mother, but hoped also then that I could share and be part of the young groups that are growing up and learning to improve our country. Um, I have certain opinions, which may not be what you think. Uh, and so therefore, I am not asking you to accept me as uh, in any measure, in, by any standard, as an expert in what I talk about. But I certainly have views that, like many of you all do, that I wish to share in answering the question that I'm going to read out to you and is part of the IELTS course. The question is, some people think women should play an equal role as men in the country's police force and the army, while others believe that women are not suited for this work. Discuss. Well, to start with, let me say that I am glad that the question asks or states that some people, well, there are always some people who have a differing view, sometimes not substantiated, sometimes well substantiated. And it goes on to ask, they think women should play an equal role. What does that really mean, an equal role? Does that mean that every opposition that a man that is there, uh, occupied by a man, must be equally uh, occupied by a woman? Or does it mean that women should also be able to rise to those ranks uh, uh, without any encumbrance, without any unnecessary hurdles, in the same right of man manner than, than that given, like that given to men? I think I agree with that. Uh, as far as um, the, the practicality of it goes, I'm afraid there might be certain uh, difficulties in relation to that uh, because, and this is what I hold fundamentally, women have an inherent nature given by nature itself, which is very demanding upon them. Whether it's fair or not is another matter. It is not for me to decide, save to bring it up. And that is to have a family. Most people in the past use that in firms to discriminate against women, which later on we found out was totally unjustified and that society lost a great deal of power and uh, an improvement uh, and a good heavy contribution from women who are also given equal rights to improve themselves and to enter the market space as equals mind you it is just like having a partner why should a woman be considered subordinate let us say she is being considered subordinate because she works in the home and it's not classified as work, then what is work? She gets up early in the morning, helps the husband get ready for work. If there are children, gets them prepared for school, deals with all their truancy, their differing natures, their ability to get them up in a good mood, to prepare themselves them, or mentally to go to school and to make sure that they have got everything that they require for the day and be safe. Thereafter, she has got to arrange to make sure that the clothes are cleaned, that the house is kept neat and clean, that the surrounds are also clean and neat. And then she has also got to prepare for when everybody returns home. She is often the first person to get up in the mornings and the last person to go to bed. She has experiences the difficulty of birth and all the corresponding issues therein. She has a difficulty while maturing, which only finishes temporarily during childbirth, 
but continues until old age, until they feel it necessary to get out the uh, necessary parts of the body uh, connected with childbirth. So you can see the amount of things that a woman has got to do just looking at this aspect of it. She has then got to go shopping, maybe depending upon public transport. She has got to look nice and pleasant for herself and her husband. She has got to make every effort to be a woman and that is not easy. It is to me a very heavy demand on women. But let us say there are women who can overcome this and successfully too and have families of the same standard and the same capacity as other families while still pursuing uh, a profession or a vocation or an avocation. Then imagine that she has got to deal with that also. She has got to prepare herself for work, mix with people that are strangers generally, go through the procedures of knowing and getting on with others at work, producing the work on time, pro uh, providing uh, a setup uh, that is productive for the, com for the company. Leaving home is another process. <coughs> and so altogether, it is rather cumbersome, very unfair for most people, especially men, to criticize them. And then don't forget, above it all, she has got the responsibility of the family. And believe you me, if you think about it seriously, she is the decision maker. She is the manager of the family. She looks after the finances in most instances, and she does so extremely successfully. So, a woman is made up with various abilities. And to lose these abilities just because they are women from the armed forces or the police is a dreadful crime, I would put it, against humanity and a dreadful crime against society. They should be given every opportunity to be able to rise as much as they wish to, depending upon their talent and depending upon the level to which they feel they can cope uh, with all the other burdens that are there. They are fearless in battle. They are just as nationalistic, if not more in certain instances. And they are able to preserve themselves and go through life in a far more practical manner than men can. Now, in a war situation, in a confrontation situation, like the police and so on and so forth, we can make sure that their safety is paramount. Not by protecting them in battle, but making sure that they get equal coverage, equal protection as anybody else. <coughs> Excuse me. Right? And as far as the police situation is concerned, they will be the best people to handle other women criminals. The presence of women in the midst of men is always a balancing factor. And it helps bond that society. It helps advance that society. It helps sharing common values and the many other social issues that are important in the progress of our lives. Let me also put it this way, that where women are included, and I here emphasize particularly, not just in the army, the navy, and the air force, because only the army is referred to in this question, most, in most cases, they are recognized for their capacity and ability, their commitment. So we must give them due deference for all the amount of work that they put in to live to their satisfaction, to their ambitions that they as women have, just as men have.
To conclude at this point, I would also like to add that women do not only contribute towards the betterment of these forces, be it the police or the armed forces, but they certainly add power and strength to it also. They undergo serious training and, as I stated earlier, are committed. But we must also be aware, as those responsible for the situation, that it's also very important to preserve women for their abilities that they have and wish to have in their future directions of life, such as having a family. They have got human rights just as much as men have. No more, no less. Just because they are generally physically weaker, I suggest that you think that they are equally more mentally strong. So in every way that I have mentioned so far, I suggest that save certain safeguards that are necessary particularly for women, which can be expensive, uh, which can be difficult, women should be able to participate with equal force and enforcement uh, and through enforcement uh, in the police forces and in the armed forces. Mind you, I'm not an expert, as I've said very clearly, uh, so uh, please understand that these are my private views at the moment. Thank you very much. Lots of respect, lots of love. Namaste.